In today's lesson, I will discuss about one of the most common causes of microcephaly in infancy. That is about benign enlargement of subarachnoid space in infancy or basie. As an introduction, large head or microcephaly means head circumference more than two standard deviation above the mean for age, gender, and the body size. About 2% of normal population has microcephaly. And the cause of large head include aerocephalus or an excessive volume of CSF intracranially, megalencephaly or enlargement of the brain and thickening of the skull and hemorrhage or non bloody fluid into the subdural or epidural spaces. External aerocephalus is the most common cause of macrocephaly infants. It's a condition in infants and the children with enlarged subarachnoid space accompanied by increased age circumference with normal or mildly dilated ventricles. Benign enlargement of subarachnoid space encompasses a variety of synonyms in different literatures, such as benign external aerocephalus, extraventricular aerocephalus, subdural hygroma, benign subdural effusion, and the like. Benign enlargement of subarachnoid space is the most common cause of microcephaly in infancy. And it's more common in males, and a genetic cause is likely in some cases with infants father often having a large head. The mean age at presentation was 7 months, and head circumference at birth is usually normal or slightly higher than normal. Benign enlargement of subarachnoid space has an incidence of 0 0.4 per 1000 life births. Etiologically, there is no definite cause for external hydrocephalus or BC, therefore it is classified as an idiopathic condition. About 40% of children with external hydrocephalus, as I have said, had, had at least one male person in their family close relative with macrocephaly. So, autosomal dominant and the multifactorial model of inheritance have been assumed. The most accepted theory about pathophysiology of external hydrocephalus is delayed maturation of the arachnoid villi, which is not able to absorb the CSF produced continuously. And normally, maturation of arachnoid villi occurs in 18 months of age. And there is also the discrepancy between the skull and the brain parenchymal growing, which leads to transient subarachnoid space enlargement. On the other hand, external hydrocephalus might be associated with some conditions such as hypomagnesemia, mucopolysaccharidosis, achondroplasia, agenesis of corpus callosum, soto syndrome, and the glutamic aciduria type 1. When we see the clinical manifestations, the main feature of benign enlargement of subarachnoid cyst is macrocephaly in a normal infant. So an otherwise normal infant is referred to medical attention because of enlarging head size. Most of the time, there is no signs and symptoms of increased intracranial pressure, However, rarely, a tense anterior fontanel, dilated scalp veins, and the frontal bossing can be seen. Neurologic findings are most of the time normal, but mild motor delay is often seen and the final developmental status, however, normal. Regarding the neuroimaging and the diagnostic workup, the first step in confronting with infants with microcephalis doing brain ultrasonography via anterior fontanel. Because this modality is fast, safe, and an expensive tool, which is used worldwide. On transfrontal ultrasound, increased subarachnoid space was used as a diagnostic criteria. And when we see such dilated uh, subarachnoid space, the second step is doing brain imaging with CT scan or brain MRI. But MRI appears essential in the differential diagnosis between benign enlargement of subarachnoid space and the subdural collection in infantis, so it is preferred over CT scan. This is a CT scan of my patient who is having benign enlargement of subarachnoid cyst. Regarding treatment, benign enlargement of subarachnoid cyst is a self-limiting condition, but giving carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, that means acetazolamide therapy for 4 to 8 weeks in daily basis is recommended. This drug or acetazolamide decreases CSF production. Most patients do not need neurosurgical intervention in the ventricular chances and they improve themselves. When we see the outcome, the head circumference usually stabilizes before the age of 18 months and the measurement afterwards typically lie above but parallel to the upper percentiles. Overall, 
20 to 30% of infants ending up with microcephaly. The most common complication of benign enlargement of subarachnoid cyst in infants and young children is increased risk of subdural hematoma after minimal or even without head trauma. So this is all about benign enlargement of subarachnoid cyst in infancy. Thank you for watching.